Hey family, hey daughters of Zion, women of God, today is your day. It is Teach My Daughters Tuesday. For those of you who um, are new here, my name is Millie. If you don't know anything about me or the Kingdom of God Matters or Teach My Daughters, I encourage you to go to my about page and then also to my videos and just kind of catch up to where we are today. But for those of you who know, who have been supporting this ministry, who the Holy Spirit has led here, and have been just, you know, blessed by the teachings that he's uh, poured out through me for you guys. It is time, you know, the Lord has told me this, and I've mentioned before, um, a couple of months ago, he said to me in his rhema word, I want you to teach my daughters. He said, teach my daughters. And so what that is, it's my uh, ministry in relationships, okay? Do I know everything? No. Have I been through some things? Yes, okay? And as I've said before, you know, our uh, experience is our witness, okay? Uh, experience is the best teacher, hallelujah. And so with that being said, I've been through some things. I know some of you have been through worse than I have, you know, so I'm not esteeming myself any higher above any of you guys, but the Lord, you know, has chosen to use my life and I have surrendered to him as his willing vessel. And this just shows my healing to be able to come before you guys and just share, you know, what I've been through and what God has brought me through, okay? So you guys, he is so serious. Um, Today, we're going to just talk about being at the crossroad, ladies, at the crossroads. And he's so serious about um, freeing his daughters is what he told me. You know, he wants to free us from the relational bondages that we have um, yoked ourselves to with men. OK, um, and not trusting God or some of us not even knowing him. OK, and just getting caught up in these cycles with men. And so we're in an hour and the Lord has started this some time ago with me. He started waking me up in 2015, okay? So that was like, what, six years ago? And so, you know, he's very serious about his daughters getting into a love relationship with him. And um, some of you are aware that you're at a crossroad right now. You know, everything is just chaotic in your life and your relationship and your marriage. You know, for some of you, you're just dating around, sleeping around, okay? And the Lord just wants you to know he's trying to bring you back to him. He's trying to wake you up and bring him back, bring you back to him, rather. And so in that, how the Lord started dealing with me, oh my goodness, you guys, this was when I was actually married and he was showing me that even though I was married, I was still being unfaithful to him. Man, you guys, when I tell you, that smacked me so hard in my face. And so I received a rhema word from the Lord because I was at a place in my life. I was at this crossroad that we're about to talk about. And everything in my life was just chaotic. Like on the outside, it looked good. I had a great job, a great like, so-called career. You know, I had the, the big home and the luxury cars and, you know, the husband and my kid, you know, and everything on the inside was just in shambles. OK, it was a mess. It was chaotic. And I couldn't understand why I wasn't happy at the job anymore and why, you know, I knew why I wasn't happy about marriage, you know, things going on. And let me just state this for the record. You know, my ex-husband, my son's father, he's a great man, okay? He's a great man. He's a great father. And, you know, we have a great relationship. Hallelujah. So I just want to put that out there, okay? I'm not, you know, bashing him or anything like that. And so, uh, just so that you guys know, okay? But the Lord will call us into right standing with him and into alignment with him when we've made these choices and built these Ishmaels as he has been having me uh, minister about these Ishmaels that we've created in relationships. You know, going ahead of God like Abraham and Sarah when they went ahead of God and created Ishmael with Hagar, okay? And not waiting for Isaac, the promised son, okay? For us, you know, getting with these men or some of us so lost, we don't even know why we're in these cycles with these men, okay? Some of us married out of alignment, hallelujah, my God. And so he began to show me that I was married to him to God. I mean, I'm sorry, married in my relationship with my ex, but I was being unfaithful to him, to God. 
And I was like, Lord, like show me where I am in my life, okay? And so he took me to Hosea chapter two. I had never read this before. Like if I had read some of it, it didn't resonate. And this is what I love about God is because he can have us read a thing or know a thing. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's a beautiful bird on my balcony. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. But anyway, um, he allows us to uh, read some things sometimes and not have that full revelation until it's time. Okay. Um, and so I asked him, you know, I'm feeling all this uh, chaos and confusion and, you know, outside of my life is great. Everybody on the outside looking in is like, oh my goodness, like, you know, everything's great. Billy's life is just, you know, and not knowing I was dying inside, okay? And some of you are right there at that point, whether you're in a marriage or a relationship that's just dead in, you know? God is saying, it's time to move on. He's already pressed this on you, okay? And so God will tear up what he wants to tear up, and he'll restore what he wants to restore in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to be coming from Hosea chapter 2, and um, I believe I'm going to have to do this in two parts because um, this chapter deals with first the unfaithfulness of Israel and then the restoration of what God wants to do if Israel turns back to him. So in this message and in this lesson, Israel, we're going to replace Israel with your name. Okay. So, um, grab your Bible. I will just say that right now, right now, excuse me, pause the video, grab your Bible so that you can kind of go along. And I'm going to re be reading from the amplified version of the Bible. Okay. And so I asked the Lord, you know, show me exactly where I was in my life. So he took me to Hosea chapter two. When I tell you guys, it like pew, pew, beat me up in the face. Okay. For me to know that this is what I was doing to my father, my God. It showed me that I didn't even know him at all. Even though I was sitting in the church behind the pews, active in the church, you know, putting my life together like I thought it was supposed to be. The whole time he was saying, you don't even know me. You're being an adulteress to me. You've forgotten me. Okay. And so I'm just going to touch on some of the scriptures in here in Hosea chapter two. And we're going to deal with today, just our unfaithfulness to God. And this ooh, is such a touchy subject. It's such a uh, sensitive um, uh, word, you know, because a lot of us are being awakened to this. It's going to hurt, ladies. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's going to hurt. But God is showing us and he wants you to know that he has to bring he has to bring everything to the surface. What I'm seeing in the spirit now is just like a pot of boiling water with the top on it, okay? And then once you take that top off, it's like everything, the steam and, you know, the condensation and all this stuff, it just comes out and goes through the room. And if you got the windows up, you know, it's going to evaporate on out. It's like that, you know, you're like a boiling pot of water on the inside. You don't know what's going on. And God is like, I need to take the lid off this thing so that you can, so all this mess can come out, the mess I didn't create. So I can show you who I am, what I want to do in your life, and then how I'm going to restore you. Hallelujah. So I love in Hosea chapter 2, how the Lord starts off saying through the prophet Hosea, uh, he's saying, say to your sister, Rahama, which means you have been pitied and have obtained mercy. Okay. So let me just say this. Some of the scripture I'm going to kind of just skim over, but the highlighted verse, uh, version verses, <laughs> I can't talk today. The highlighted verses, I am going to read them. Okay. Okay. So he's saying Rohama, which means you have been pitied and have obtained mercy. So God has seen all that you have done. He's seen all that I have done in my life in regards to relationships, everything I did before I was married, everything, you know, within the marriage that was out of alignment. Okay. And so, um, he sees all that we have done and been going through in that area of our romantic relationships, if that's what we can call them. Okay. You guys, uh, he's saying that he's saying Rohama, meaning that he has compassion on you. He's sympathizing with you with what you're going through, <clears throat> excuse me, like he's looking for, down from heaven and he's seeing, you know, the emotional abuse, um, 
He's seeing that you don't know who you are. He's seeing that you're not mimicking who he created you to be. He's seeing that you're not mimicking who you are in him. And he's having sympathy on you. He's pitying you. Okay. The same with me. All right. He's uh, sympathizing with your pain, which means he's sharing in your pain, a pain that he did not cause. Okay. And he wants you to wake up. And some of you, he's been showing you your way out, like you're awakening. A lot of you, sadly, you know, it's going to be divorce. You know this because the Lord, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you in that. Okay. So I'm not going to even go there with the religious people, please. Okay. But those of you in the Holy Spirit, you know, all right. And so he's awakening you to that. Hallelujah. Some of you who aren't married, you know, he's been telling you, leave that man alone, okay? Like everything that you're trying to, to um, do in your own strength, you know, uh, to make this relationship work and everything you're trying to do and give of yourself and you've given your body, you've given your mind, you've given your spirit, your soul, and you're still getting nothing. And the Lord is just telling you, he's like, wake up, my daughter. Like, I have so much more for you. Like, he's not the one, Okay. So let me just not get ahead of myself. Hallelujah. He also must explain to, uh, to you that what you've been doing to him, he wants to explain to you what you've been doing to him and being out of alignment in these relationships. And if you don't turn away, um, from your man idols, okay, what can become of you? Okay. So this is what the first part of Hosea chapter two is talking about. What Israel, what she you, me, we're doing to God. And if we did not turn from those things, those idols in our life, which some of us have made marriage an idol, we put our husbands before God. I know that's what I did. Oh, Lord forbid, you know, I did it though. I had my husband up here because I was trying to clean him up and, you know, make him whole. And, you know, I was trying to do Jesus' job. And Jesus is like, no, like I'm the one that cleans the fish. Okay, I cook it and stir fry it, like, or whatever I'm doing to it, you know, okay, yeah, you can catch fish, but I do the cleaning is what the Lord is saying. And some of you are exhausting yourselves trying to clean up the fish. You can't do that, okay? There's nothing in you that's no, there's no amount of sex you can give this man. There's no amount of money you can give to this man, this bow, this, um, you know, man idol that you've created and esteemed ahead of your father or above our father. Okay. There's nothing you can do anymore. All right. And this is what God wants you to realize, like you're wearing yourself out. Okay. And so, um, I'm going to read verses two through three and I'm going to break those down and then whatever other ones that I have highlighted here. So verses two through three says, um, Contend with your mother, which is the nation. Contend. But again, mother, um, Israel, she in this passage is going to be you. Put your name there, okay? So contend with you, okay? This is the Lord. what the Lord is saying. Uh, he's saying, for she, you, are not my wife, and I am not her husband. And I have her remove her marks of prostitution from her face and her adultery from between her breasts. Or if she doesn't, I will strip her naked and expose her as on the day she was born and make her like a wilderness and make her like a parched land and slay her with, th with thirst. So what the Lord is saying is that when he says, I'll strip you naked if you don't stop this, if you don't take heed to what I'm trying to show you, um, I'm trying to, to bring you back to me, okay? He's saying, I'll expose you and make you like a wilderness. So what he's saying uh, and back in those days, when a woman was an adulteress, um, she was made a, a public display of. They really used to do women really bad, you know, back in those times. You know, uh, some women were made to look like adulteress, adulteresses because their husbands were putting them away. They were like, or divorcing them for reasons that the Lord didn't, you know, specify um, because they were divorcing them because they didn't like them anymore. Uh, they bought their body changed or they didn't like their attitude anymore, you know, just throwing them away. That's what putting away is. Okay. So, um, 
you know, he's saying that I'll make a public display of you and expose you. Again, this is what was literally done to an adulteress back then. But today, this looks like your name being in the streets, okay? Because of your promiscuity, your embarrassment because of that, okay? Um, you know, just a bad reputation. Um, you know, your name is out here. You're, he's going to, if you don't stop it, and some of you already have gone through that, all right? If you don't stop it, it's public shame and embarrassment that's coming to you, okay? And the enemy can have his way and have fun with you in that area as well, okay? So he's saying, he's like warning you. He warned me, okay? Um, not that I was cheating on my husband, okay? Let me set that straight. Some of y'all get crazy, okay? All right, <laughs> verses six through seven. Uh, therefore, behold, I, the Lord God, will hedge up her way with thorns and I will build a wall against her, shutting off her way so that she cannot find her paths. God is so good in that. OK, um, verse seven says she'll passionately pursue her lovers, but she will not overtake them and she will seek them, but will not find them. Then she will say, let me go and return to my first husband, for it was better for me then than now. And so what God is saying is that he loves you so much. He has this compassion on you, this pity, this rohama on you, okay? So he's going to hedge your way up because some of you don't have a mind to stop what you're doing, okay? Some of you are afraid because you put all your confidence in this man. You put all your hope in this man that you're with. Or ladies, if you're married, you've put all your hope in your husband, okay? Where God is the head, okay? And if your man is not submitted under God, it's like the blind leading the blind. Like, how are you guys going to even be in alignment in that three-strand cord that can't be broken if your man is not in his right position? We serve a God of order. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he's saying, I will hedge up your way and block you. Um, that means by obstacles, okay? Like some of you who are not married and you're out here and, you know, you're going from man to man, he's going to put those obstacles in your way so that, you know, when you used to get a holla holla, you know, you're not getting those hollers like you used to. You know, the men are not coming at you like they used to. Like God is putting a hedge up on that. Hallelujah. Um, he's bringing adversity for some of you who are not listening. See, God has already been speaking to you, okay? And you're not listening. So this is where the adversity comes from. There's hurt and pain in the hopes that you will turn back to him, okay? He doesn't want you to go through this. He's not causing it, but he is a just God. His, just, his judgments are righteous either way. OK, so if you're being disobedient and you're out of alignment, here comes the adversity. This is why the relationship isn't working. This is why some of you, why the outside looks so good and the inside is tore up. OK. All right. So the Lord wants you to um, turn back to him and to stay with him. All right. So God is provoking you to um, and to provoke you means to stimulate or give you uh, a rise to action to move into his purpose for your life. So this is where the frustration is coming in at with some of you because God is provoking you. He's provoking you. He's, he's poking you. He's trying to get you to rise up, woman of God, daughter of Zion. He's trying to get you to rise up into the woman he's created you to be, okay? But um, so again, this is bringing that frustration that you're feeling like nothing's going to click. Everything you've been praying for, in this relationship that you're in, being out of alignment in your marriage or in just, you know, relational things, the Lord cannot bring any of your prayers to fruition until you get in alignment, until you let that thing go. Here's a rhema word that the Lord told me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When I was feeling like this, which I said at the beginning of the video, like everything was in chaos. I had this job making all this money, but... <laughs> You know, I was unhappy. I was in, unhappy in my home. I had all this stuff and I was unhappy. And the Lord told me one day I, I went to work and I couldn't take it no more. I was about to just walk off the job. I don't know where I was going. I was just about to just go somewhere. Okay. And the Lord spoke to me loud and clear. And he said, you have to let him go to see who I am. Hallelujah. That was a word from the Lord. He was talking about my husband for those of you who want to get started. Okay.
He said, you have to let him go to see who I am. That was my word from the Lord, okay? And so when he said that, it was so profound. And I was just like, okay, I knew it was from the Lord. I had to obey, okay? And shortly after, he, we were separated, okay? All right, I'm not going into my full testimony right now, but somebody needs to hear that. Hallelujah, okay? And so... Again, this is why everything in your life seems boggled up and confusing. You don't know whether to go left or right. And that's where I was. And this is why you're at the crossroad. You don't know whether to go left and stay with the man or go right and go with God. Okay? Hallelujah. So he's trying to wake you up. He's letting you know that I'm going to supply and provide for you. And I stand here as a witness or sit here as a witness today in my experience which is my witness to tell you guys when I was obedient to that rhema word of you have to let him go to see who I am when I did. And then also I had to let that job go because I was esteeming that before my father, before my source, my provider, which is him. Okay. My husband at the time was a resource. My job was a resource. Hallelujah. But the Lord is the source. So I had to let go of the two things that I esteemed above my father, my God. For him to show me who he is. Okay? And when I tell you guys, I didn't lack anything. I don't look like what I've been through. I did not lose anything. Okay? I was afraid of losing, you know, my beautiful home and, you know, my luxury car and all this stuff. And the Lord was like, you know, here's something about God. Because, see, even though I was making those mistakes, even though I was out of alignment in my marriage, even though, you know, I was putting things together and doing things my way. And, you know, I still, I thought I was really with God and I was, but I wasn't where he wanted me to be with him. I was almost serving him out of a sense of religion. Yes. And fear like Job. Okay. And so what he had to show me was that when I let these things go, he could show me who he was or is in my life and this is why he did not allow me to lose anything because he knew and still knows my heart okay the lord looks at the heart ladies he looks at the heart gentlemen if you you're tuned in he looks at the heart okay and so he knew that what was in my heart, it was not my intent to put my husband above him. It was not my intent to put my job above him. It was not my intent to put things above him, which I didn't, okay? Like, I love the nice things, but, you know, I didn't put those things above him. I don't have to have them. I was just blessed to have them, and I still am, okay? I still have a luxury car, okay? Brand new, actually. Praise God. I'll just share that testimony, all right? So, hey, you know, I have a beautiful place. Like, I'm blessed. My life is blessed. Even though I've messed up, he still blesses me because of my heart. It was not my intent. Now, if you're out here intending, ladies, to, to you know, do what you're doing, and your intent is to go against God, then he's going to deal with you in that aspect as well. Okay? My God. Thank you, Lord. I wasn't even, that wasn't even in my notes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. So verses eight through nine says, for she, Israel, or you, okay, we say we're going to use your name, whereas Israel or mother or she. Uh, so for she, for you have not uh, noticed nor understood nor realized that it was I, the Lord God, who gave her the grain and the new wine and the oil and lavished on her silver and gold, which they used for Baal and made into his image. Therefore, I will return and take back my grain at harvest time and my new wine in its season. I will also take away my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. So this is exactly what I was just saying. You know, for me, I didn't have to go through, thank God, verses eight through nine, where he took away his grain, his wine and his oil and the flax from me and, and left me naked. I took heed. When the Lord said, you have to let him go to see who I am, maybe a day or so later, I was at my um, ex-husband's face. You got to go. Okay? Like, and he knows my relationship with the Lord, you know? And so he knows I hear from the Lord. And he knew. When I told him what the Lord said, he knew. Okay? And the Lord worked it out beautifully, you know, to how we separated. Okay? 
All right, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but I didn't have to lose. This is why I said, you know, I didn't lose my house. And I did a testimony about my move to Dallas where I have my testimony about me selling that home as well, okay? So I didn't lose anything. God blessed me tremendously and is still blessing me, okay? And so um, some of you are going to go through verses eight through nine, unfortunately. You know, God judges that, you know, on the intent of your heart, as I was just saying before. Okay, but he's still, you know, some of you have already lost some things, but he's still the God of restoration. He's still the God of restoration. You know, when some of you have lost things and um, you were making the decision, a lot of you have women have lost things because of the man. Because you're getting stuff on your credit for the man. You're giving him all your money. You're dressing him up. You, you know, you're trying to make a man. My mother used to say this all the time. She used to say, I know up so much about a man or enough about a man, I can make one myself. Okay, she had been through and she was tired, okay? But you guys, a lot of you have, have gotten yourselves in this upside down situation because of a man, because you're trying to build a man, like a builder bear okay? And the Lord is saying, okay, you've gotten yourself in this mess. A lot of you are in so much debt and just chained to that. And the Lord will supply. He will supply. He will take care of you. You just have to follow his leading. Count whatever you have lost gain for Christ and for who he is and for knowing him. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. So these man idols or Baal, you know, which were the idols back then, um, the Lord is saying, oh, I'm going to touch on, I'm sorry, the, the grain, the wine, and the oil. And so what the grain is, is, uh, is uh, the financial or the material blessing it, that strengthens us, you know, and sustains us. So that's what some of you um, have lost some of, you know, of that, that uh, sustainability. You know, even though he's still sustaining you, but you had to lose some things, Okay. Um, the wine is the joy of life and comfort. And I'm sorry, the grain, you can uh, reference Luke 12, 18 through 19. Wine, the joy of life and comfort. Psalm 4, 7 or Ecclesiastes 9, 7. And the oil is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the healing of wounds and the softening of the heart. So the grain, wine and oil is what we should all have flowing in our lives. Okay. And so we don't want to lose that. We don't want the Lord to take that back from us, okay, in order to show us. Like the goal is to not go through verses 8 through 9, okay? That's the goal. And so, um, but he's the God of restoration and he'll restore that, which we'll talk about next week. But again, these three, the grain, wine, and oil, explain God's will to abundantly bless every area of our lives, okay? So that's our material blessings, our emotional blessings, our spiritual blessings. So everything we need to be fully satisfied is in life is found in God and not the man, okay? So he wants to fill you up, daughter of Zion, woman of God. He wants to fill you up with him, okay? Those voids that you've been filling in your life with the man and the things and everything else that's going on. And some of you, you know, tricking these men into buying you stuff and all of that. You know, well, really, you're the fool because you got to lay on your back to get some of the stuff. Okay, you know, and God is like, stop doing that to yourself, daughter. Like, you don't have to do that. Like, I, you don't even have to lay on your back for me. This is what God is saying. I'm going to bless you just because you're my daughter. Okay, you ain't got to worry about getting no STD or none of that with the Lord. Okay, he's going to show you. You ain't got to worry about having babies and or getting pregnant and going to have an abortion because you, you know, think you've made a mistake and all this stuff. God is saying, please, daughter of Zion, woman of God, team up with me. I want to show you I'm your husband first. I want to show you that I'm the one that provided for you, just like the, the scripture says, okay? He wants to manifest the desires of your heart that he put there in the first place before you went ahead of him trying to do it yourself. So that's creating that Ishmael or all these Ishmaels, you know, and these soul ties and these yokes. Some of you are yoked to many men. You might be one man right now, but you're still yoked to uh, several others, okay? And so the Lord is saying, every desire that you want in your in your life, that's, that I put in your heart, 
to your desire for marriage, your desire for children, your desire for a better life, your desire, you know, for an abundant life, your desire to, you know, whatever it is that's good from the Lord. He's saying, I will do that. You don't have to stress yourself out, wear yourself thin, give of yourself like you're doing in order to receive this. Okay. He's saying, I am the one that will give it to you. My goodness, and when you find this love that I recently found with the Lord, you guys, I am so in love with him. If you don't see it coming out of me, those who have eyes to see will see, ears to hear will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. But when I tell you guys I'm so in love with him, I don't care nothing about the luxury cars that I drive and have driven and still drive. I don't care anything about this luxury apartment that I'm in, the beautiful home that I just sold, the beautiful one that's coming that the Lord told me that has nothing on the first one that I sold, okay? I don't care about the trips I take. I don't care about anything but Him and the souls He has attached to my life. Do I like all the things I mentioned? Yes. Do I love some of them? Yeah. Will I let them go? Yes. Okay? My God, and he wants to get you to that point. Hallelujah. And I'm not bragging or boasting. My heart is so pure and clean as I'm saying this. No mini heart attack is rising up in me saying this stuff. No pride. None of that. I don't care about it. It's so amazing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was going through my notebooks this morning and I came up on one where God told me he was going to take me to the place where in me, where everything I had and what I drove and what I wore would be a non-factor. And he's done that. At first, yeah, when I first got my luxury card for the first time like 10 years ago, you know, and I've had newer ones since, okay, come on somebody. But, you know, it was just like at the time when I got it 10 years ago, it was brand new off the showroom floor, okay? And so it made me feel like somebody, you know what I mean? And so even as I got more cars through the years, he was just like, you know, this is not going to mean anything to you. And he's right. It doesn't mean anything. It's like everything I build on the outside, you know, this image that I was building on the outside, the Lord was just like, you don't have to do that. Like everything you need is in me. And I've said this before, and what he's doing right now, ladies, he wants to build us up from the inside out. So your outside can match your inside and your inside your outside. Okay. Well, first your inside your outside. Okay. So let me say that better. So what's on the inside of you comes out. It matches. Like before, my outside didn't match my inside. My inside was tore up. My outside was beautiful. Okay? All right, ladies. So oh, I think I'm going to end it here next week. I think I'm going to come on next week. Initially, I said I was going to do every other uh, Tuesday. But I'm going to come on next week. And we're going to finish Hosea chapter 2. And we're going to talk about restoration, ladies. Oh, my God. God is so good. Um, he's so good. So I just want to leave it here. He put a song on my heart when I was preparing for this message. And I'm going to link it. If it doesn't pop up, you know, on the video, look in the description box. But it's by Aretha Franklin. And it is called A Rose is Still a Rose. Okay? And he just wants you to know a rose is still a rose. Just like she said, you're still a flower. He will make you or break you, take you and whatever she said. But she said, darling, you hold the power. Okay? And that's what God wants you to know. You hold the power. Because the power comes from me, okay? That's what the Lord is saying to you. He's saying that to you guys. He's saying that to you ladies. I'm sorry. Daughters of Zion. Women of God. So, I'm going to link that video or that song in the description. Actually, the video. Because the video is very powerful, okay? And so, I'm going to link it. Listen to it. You guys, um, meditate on Hosea chapter 2. Feel free to just read through the whole chapter and meditate on it. And I'll be back next week to um, teach on the restoration and what God wants to do as well, okay? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, thank you to those of you who have subscribed. If you're new here and you feel like you need to subscribe, go ahead and do that. Make sure you guys turn on your bell notifications so you're notified whenever I come on with the video. Um, thank you guys so much for your emails and your prayer requests, all of your words of encouragement. 
they just really keep me going. There are days where I just want to be like, Lord, I can't do this. But he told me already in advance, like even when you think you don't want to do it or you think you won't do it, you'll do it. This is why he told me he chose me because that's why I asked him like, no, I don't want to do this. And he's just like, no, you'll do it. Even when you think you, you won't, you will, you know. And so I just want to say that your words of encouragement push me all the more, okay? Thank you for all of you guys who have just been so generous with your finances and sowing into this ministry. Um, may the Lord bless you 1,000 fold in all areas of your life. I am just so grateful, um, you know, that God has even chosen me. So thank you all so much. And I will talk to you all next week. I love you, ladies. I want to pray for you. Let me not get off here without praying, okay? Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all of your beautiful di uh, diamonds. Yes, your daughters of Zion, your women of God who you're building up in this hour. They belong to you. Um, I thank you for just uh, gently showing them who you are and um, giving them a mind to be obedient in what you're calling them to do. I, I ask that you break the chains of religion off of their life. I ask that you break the chains of misunderstanding off of their life and just give them fresh revelation into their personal situations. I thank you, Lord. I ask that you cover all of them with the precious blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I thank you for just breaking down those strongholds as they submit themselves under you. Then the, uh, they can resist the devil and he will flee in the mind mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your protection, uh, for your strength, for building your, your women up, your daughters up, Lord God, to be the precious jewels that you created them to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'll see you guys next week. Teach my daughters, you guys. You're going to come out so beautiful. The Lord is definitely going to give you guys beauty for ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. Amen.